Hey everybody and welcome back to the big data software. Today we'll be discussing in this video few popular softwares like Kafka, Cassandra, Hadoop, Spark and MongoDB will be discussed here. The first thing to note is that these all are no SQL or no SQL databases. That means that they can store large amount of unstructured data and these data need not be in a table format, in relational or in any schema format. So this becomes quite easy to deal with uh, any unstructured, any kind of data with the help of these softwares. So now I would uh, come to Kafka now. Let's just discuss Kafka. So this Kafka is launched by Apache. And as you can see that this Kafka is for real time streaming of the data. What it does is it collects your big data and it helps you for the real time analysis. It is fast, it is scalable and this is fault tolerant. And uh, who uses these this Kafka? Actually, um, LinkedIn created Kafka for its uh, LinkedIn uh, website because it, it is flooded with a lot of information, uh, live streaming of blogs and articles and videos. So Kafka manages it quite well. It streams this data into different categories. It compresses this data and provides with excellent management. And why is it fault resistance? Because we can see that LinkedIn does not crash. So this is like Kafka's hats off to Kafka that it is working very well and in this big data analysis. And uh, LinkedIn uses it to track the activity data and operational metrics also. Twitter is also using it as a part of a strom to provide stream processing infrastructure. Yahoo uses this, Netflix uses it. Now this is getting much popularity, Kafka. Okay, now let's go on to, and this is open source, okay? Now let's go on to Cassandra. This is again an open source. This is NoSQL database and this is for speedy online transaction. This came in 2008 and Apache launched this. Now uh, again this also borrows the same features like it is open source distributed. Then it has a NoSQL database management system. It can handle lots of data. There are very few uh, differences between, between all these um, softwares which we'll be dealing. It depends on the business requirement and it also depends on the capacity of the management to invest on these uh, softwares because few are really very efficient and they are costly and while a few like Hadoop and um, Spark are, are, are on a lesser side. So you can uh, compare according to your business needs to go for which big data software. So now uh, companies like Netflix, Instagram, eBay, MSDE, it is eBay, Apple and Walmart are using Cassandra. And uh, Cassandra is, uh, it uses, it is a more traditional model as compared to your uh, uh, different uh, softwares. And this uh, stores data in a form of a table, you know, rows and columns format. More traditional, uh, Cassandra is more traditional as compared to other uh, softwares. Now you come to Hadoop, okay. So this Hadoop was launched in 2006 and um, it is a distributed again file system and but this is used for parallel processing. Remember guys that this is not used for real time analysis. Okay, this is not used for real time analysis. For this we have got Kafka and Cassandra. Okay, and Spark. We, we do not have Hadoop for real time processing. It is for batch processing. So uh, when you want to do massive batch processing of your data, you use Hadoop and many companies are into this Hadoop technology. And uh, so, so like Microsoft, Cloudera, British Airways, Marks and Spencer, they are using Hadoop to uh, deal with data searching, data storage analysis and reporting of voluminous data. So this, this helps in your uh, batch processing. Okay. And this is not for real time analysis. Remember this thing. This is the difference between other softwares. Now we come to Spark. Actually, this is again of Apache Spark, which has been launched. And uh, what does it do is it is again, this is now a data analysis engine. Okay. And this process is real time data from real time events like Twitter and Facebook. Now these websites, they are becoming more and more dynamic and you need to have uh, a track record of all the transactions of all the, all the, um, activities which has been taking place in on this website so like real-time streaming you on-demand video on-demand uh, everything like on content so for this you need some very solid scalable dependable software and spark does it so it is a real-time it, it it monitors these events 
and it is easier as compared to Hadoop and uh, what happens is that now this is a little technical that it is more advanced cluster computing engine than Hadoop and this can handle any type of requirement um, like batch, interactive, iterative or streaming. Now Hadoop was only dealing with batch processing but this is dealing with all kinds of data, all kinds of queries. Now let's come to another one and that is MongoDB. Um, now, this MongoDB is again a NoSQL database program. It is an advanced version of your NoSQL database. This is, uh, now this is like, it is giving you high performance and it's it's a um, document-oriented database. So, what is this document-oriented database is that it, um, it has a model and this, this is more, more efficient when you need some structure in your, in your, in your company and you use for MongoDB as compared to Cassandra. So it again requires uh, your, rec on a, based on your requirements, you will choose MongoDB or Cassandra, right, or uh, Kafka. And this can represent any type of object structure. This is highly scalable. And uh, one disadvantage with MongoDB is that it has, uh, there's a concept of slave and master here. And this works with a single master and there are multiple slaves. So what happens is if this master gets crashed, one of the slaves, uh, these slaves take over as masters and uh, the time taken by these slaves to become master, it reduces the query time. So when you want to process anything from the database, that request would not be fulfilled because, because of the time taken to, uh, you know, replace master with slaves. So uh, Cassandra just um, uh, overcomes this because it has got multiple masters and these masters will be managing multiple uh, queries like input queries whatever you give and simultaneously you can process so many database queries so that's why Cassandra is more robust if you want to have uh, more you're dealing with non-structured data and then this does not have any query language support yet but it supports a wide it does not have its own query language but it supports a wide range of languages like C, C++, Java, Python etc and this is also true for other um, softwares like big data softwares so this was about uh, MongoDB. Another thing I wanted to tell you about um, one more uh, data set which we have, one more uh, software which we have is Hive. Uh, I have not told you about Hive. This is Apache Hive. It was launched in 2010 and this is built on Java. <clears throat> and um, actually this works over Hadoop. And this, this is used for, since Hadoop is only used for batch processing, this is used for data query and analysis. So you can use Hive over Hadoop for performing your data query and analysis or you can use integrate Hadoop with your Spark or Cassandra or any other softwares. So this, this provides you a basic batch processing and it can be clubbed in with a real time, um, any real time software which provides you with real time streaming like Cassandra, Kafka and uh, work it with Hadoop. So learning only Hadoop will not suffice guys. You have to learn another technology which is advanced which can work alongside with Hadoop to give you more functionality and and diversify your uh, domain of uh, functionality so that you can effectively carry out all the tasks of your organizations and um, meet all the customer requirements. And um, I think this is it for this video. In the next lecture, we shall study more about like um, the career perspectives. I think uh, I have it. So we can study about the jobs, big data career certification, what are the job roles, scope in India, and the salary perspective for uh, big data if you want to go inside that so thanks for watching